Hey everyone, welcome back to Reading with Tatiana. It's been a while for me, actually a month since I filmed. You probably can't tell on my channel because I batch uploaded to release a video a week for September, uh, but I usually don't share anything personal from my life. I'm still basking in the glow. Uh, I was away for two and a half weeks. I went on vacation with three of my best friends uh, to Italy. I also saw a friend of mine get married in Greece, and it was just a freaking amazing trip. I popped some smoke photos. Um, it was great and like I was really fortunate because I know not everyone has the time and money to do this and this is the first time that me and my three best friends have traveled extensively together and you know we're in our mid-30s so I just feel very lucky that we're able to take time off together to travel and you know there are people that have over 20 plus years and it was just really amazing and now I'm back. I was hoping I would read more of my trip but I didn't so I actually read two books in September. Um, one of the books I'm reviewing today, which is The Wishing Game by Meg Schaffer, and fortunately I gave this book a 1 out of 5. Before I get into my full book review, I always like to do a booktuber shout. This is a recent subscriber called Chocolate Cover Pages. Uh, they are a well-established booktuber, so I really appreciate their support for my channel, and they've been around for 3 years. I'll link their channel down below if you want to check out uh, their channel. And as always, if you're watching this video, I always appreciate your continued support. Give it a uh, thumbs up, comment down below, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. This book was published just this year in 2023. Uh, the genre I would put in is fiction, a bit of magic realism, and maybe contemporary romance, because I felt the romance is very forced. A bit about the author, Meg Schaffer. So she's a part-time creative writing instructor, and also a full-time uh, master of fine arts candidate in TV and screenwriting at Stevens College, which which is in Missouri. Uh, the Wishing Game is her debut novel. I haven't been able to find a lot of information about her online, but that's all I have for you. So let's get into the premise of the book and, you know, maybe you'll see why I didn't like it so much. So we start with Lucy Hart. She is a teacher aide and she's struggling in life. She lives with three roommates, her car doesn't really work, and she doesn't have a lot of savings to her name. Uh, however, as a teacher aide, she's connected with one of her students who is in foster care called Christopher, who's like seven or eight years old, and she really wants to adopt him. Um, it's an interesting situation because I think the book paints it as you have a lot of empathy, that they have a strong relationship, and you really root that, that she can adopt him. But if you think about her life, she doesn't have her life together for just even herself. So it's just like, I already cannot suspend this belief that this is already something to pull in my heartstrings. Um, and she really relates to Christopher because she had a tough childhood where her sister was always sick, so her parents always neglected her, and Christopher is obviously also neglected being in foster care. Well, not obviously, but in his case, he's neglected. There are people who can have very good foster situations out there in real life. Um, and in this world, in the wishing game, there's also a very prolific children's book writer called Jack Masterson, and he has written lots of books, but he hasn't written in a while. And he lives in the Pacific Northwest on this island called Clock Island, where his book illustrator, who's a British guy in his like early 30s, Hugo Reese. And so um, everyone is kind of like waiting for Jack Masterson to write his next big book, but he hasn't yet. And then so one day, Jack announces a contest that he's going to invite four, or invite, well, it ended up being four, but he's going to invite people who, um, I guess, are worthy to come to his island to do a competition and whoever wins will get the only copy of his next published book and they can do whatever they want with his book they can keep it they can sell it but the idea is they will probably sell it so they can make like lots of money and it's kind of like you know they'll be rich so in the end the four people who are invited one of them is obviously lucy hart so lucy comes onto his island competes and basically that's where the story starts um and yeah, so that's the premise of the book. I feel like as I say it, the premise sounds really interesting because it is kind of interesting. It's kind of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? But then as the book goes through, it's just not a great book. So that's why I really felt bad giving the one because it started with really high hopes for this book when I introduced the premise. But as we learn the characters and as the plot develops, I'm like, oh, just minus one, minus one, minus one. <laughs> so the common themes I found in this book is the importance of chosen family. Uh, Lucy and Christopher and even Hugo and Jack Masterson, all these main characters, they never really were close with the family they were born into 
or you know maybe something happened where there's a rift but they're each other's chosen family that's really important um also the idea of suspending disbelief and wishing for things to come true because in this book if you wish for it it will come true even if it doesn't make sense and also i love i do enjoy this book because i love a book about books and this book does talk about uh, Jack Masterson, as many all these children in this book, have an impact on all these kids and the idea of how like, you know, books and stories are really powerful in the kids' life because it gives them a form of escapism, escapism and comfort. So let's get into things I didn't like about this book. So the first one is, it's unbelievable the relationship between Lucy and Christopher. She is a teacher aide, she sees Christopher only sometimes, and she almost like is projecting her past trauma on Christopher to form this connection. It's just bleh. Also, the relationship between Lucy and Hugo. So Lucy's in her 20s, Hugo's in her 30s, his 30s, which doesn't seem that far-fetched. However, you come to find out that they met when she was a child and he was like a young adult and they form this romantic relationship now. It's just a little bit a little creepy as well. Um, also, in this book, Jack, the author, has several year pen pal relationships with children writing back and forth, back and forth, giving them advice and that kind of stuff. And even though it's good intended, it's also like too unbelievable for me that he had the time to do this. It's kind of like he's almost like sad to dedicate his whole life to kids, which is like admirable, but also like unbelievable, maybe a bit creepy, I don't know. Also, there's also introduction to plots that happen throughout the book that lead to nowhere. Not a spoiler, but you know, the man that appears at night for Lucy that lures her, that doesn't go anywhere. Um, and also the idea that money, they emphasize that money is not important and the importance is people around you. However, everything, every problem in the book is solved by money that Jack Masterson has. So, mm. and also like, there's so much emphasis on how important this game can be for everyone and change your lives. But in the end, the game was kind of anticlimactic. So, those are all my gripes with this book. The uh, one thing I did like, as I mentioned before, is I think the premise had a lot of potential to be interesting, but ultimately it just fell flat. Uh, on Goodreads, so when I first started reading this book, I saw the reviews was 4.25. That's why my book club picked it because we can't always say anything over four is probably a good read. However, this book just came out a few uh, just a year pretty recently, so a few weeks ago it was actually 4.6. When I wrote my review, it was 4.25, and now that I'm checking this review, is 4.21, so it's quickly dropping. So I feel like these reviews aren't going to be very accurate. Um, so bad reviews. I'm not going to like talk about this book anymore because I feel like all the things I said, people have said too, why I didn't like it, a lot of people don't like it for the same reasons. Um, reasons that people didn't like it is I think it is a form of escapism where everything just falls into place, it's super easy and great for everyone involved so I can see why people like this book. Um, I think if you would like Midnight Library, you'll probably like this book too. They're very different concepts but kind of the same feeling where like everything just kind of works out. Why I think you should read this book? You should read it if you like a book about books because it's definitely that and also it's a book where everything is solved very easily with no logic and now i'll share um how this book made me feel because if you ask me a week a year five years from now i probably won't remember exactly what this book was about but also remember how it made me feel so this book the wishing game by Mag, Sch Mag Schaffer, it made me feel very frustrated i just did not enjoy this book I pulled through because it was a book club book, but I would not recommend this book unless you like this very specific genre. Thanks for watching until the end of my video. I always appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you're not part of my channel yet, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!